Hello, and uh, after yesterday's absolutely superb announcements about Xamarin and Microsoft working really closely together to bring us um, portable class library support across all of the modern platforms, um, after that, I thought what I would do is I would quickly give you a demo of what the new stable world looks like. Um, there are some, some changes still coming, but this is a quick run through just to show you how things can, can work together now that we have official portable support and now that we have these official open packages from Microsoft, which is brilliant because they can be used on all platforms. So um, yeah, this is all going to be about MVVM Cross. I'm Slodge, Stuart Lodge. We're going to be using the latest stable, so Xamarin 1.8, Android 4.10. We're going to be using the latest NuGet um, installer, so 2.7.2. .2. And we're going to be using the latest pre-release packages of Beta 3 of 3.014 from MVVM Cross. So that's enough about the, the background, let's just dive in. So this is Visual Studio 2012 still, I haven't upgraded. Um, and what I'll do is I will do a demo. And so let's do demo.core. Um, and uh, we're going to choose a portable class library. And we're not going to go for what we've normally done. But you can see there's some small changes here in terms of the way this is set up. We've got some new entries in this uh, portable thing. And what I'm going to choose is Xamarin Android, Xamarin iOS. I'm going to choose Windows Phone 8 rather than Windows Phone 7.5 and, and that's because Microsoft have made some uh, licensing changes which is kind of barring Windows Phone 7.5 from uh, from playing in, in lots of ways. We're going to choose Silverlot 5 um, and once we've done that then we can hit um, OK um, and hopefully this will go off and it will build um, the demo. So we're going to pull in a demo core and if you've watched any of these demos before, you'll know normally these projects that we build are Profile 104, which is to do with those things that we've just seen, those, those choices. Here, if we look at the project file, we now have, um, if I just zoom in, we now have Profile 158 rather than 104. So this might change again, but for now that seems to be where um, a few people are having quite good success, so that's where we're playing. Um, and what I'll do is I'll delete the, the empty file class from here and then I'll go to NuGet, again using 2.7.2, .2, make sure you upgrade. Um, and I will go to NuGet and I will search for MVVM Cross. Um, you can see that I have got include pre-release here. So, you know, because we're using these beta 3 packages, you can see I've got include pre-release. Um, if you don't have that, you'll get the old packages and they might not work as well with this, this new world. So I'm going to hit install. And it goes off and downloads the, the core assemblies for MVVM Cross. Um, having done that, I can then look through uh, my first view model here. Um, you know, it's just a standard first view model. And what I'd quite like to do is just put some asynchronous in it. So let's, you know, um, go back to NuGet. And in NuGet, you know, because this profile doesn't have um, async by default, what we're going to do is we're going to search for async and we'll search for BCL, which is the base class libraries, which is the stuff that the guys like um, Daniel and Dave and all, all the guys on the PCL team really um, pull for us and ship for us. And you can see there's some good packages in here. So let's pull in um, the HTTP client libraries. And uh, let's also pull in, and um, we'll accept their terms because they are now very open terms, which is brilliant. Um, and let's also you just find it install Microsoft Async, which will allow us to use Async within our portable class library. So having done that, we can then go back to our first view model, and let's add a constructor. And then let's also just add a task. Um, and so what we're going to do is just add a, uh, it can be a private, a private Async method. So the compiler will get hold of that and uh, do wonderful things for us. So we're going to import task. And uh, we'll just call this Go. We should probably call it Go Async. And um, what we'll do is within this, we will do some HTTP work. So we've got this, you know, we've just imported the HTTP client. So let's use it. So we're going to pull HTTP client in. Um, there are There is an option to pass in a handler. And particularly if you're on iOS, then um, Paul Betts has done some brilliant modern handlers for, for HTTP client, which you might want to look at. But for now, I'm just going to use this. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the result um, from that client of let us do a get async and for you know the sake of um, of celebrating uh, Microsoft's brilliant announcements yesterday let us uh, pull back a Microsoft site like Bing. So we're going to get hold of that. Uh, once we've done that let's get hold of the stream from the results. So result.content 
result dot is it result dot result dot content I think I don't need to do that but we'll, we'll take a look in a second um, so let's do a reader stream async and let's do an await and then that should give us um, our nice is that working is that what have I done wrong I don't think I do need a result in there. Well, we'll leave a the result there. Maybe I've done it wrong. So let's uh, await the let's uh, await that stream coming back. Oh, I may have done this wrong. I'm not a an expert in the uh, await async land. And then let's use a stream reader. Um, apologies if I have got that wrong. Demos of live the perils of live coding. Um, let me pull back a stream reader, which is going to do the stream. And then if we get it back, let's actually just do. Um, Let's set our, our member, which is here, this hello, equal to streamreader dot read to end dot length. So we won't put the entire content into our uh, text field. Um, what we'll do is we'll just put, you know, the length of the string was whatever in this in this field. Um, and then so all we need to do then is actually just kick off that from our constructor. So we'll do that in our constructor. We won't await it there or anything because, you know, we, we just want to fire off this event. Um, and then that should be our core. So that's a core using HTTP client, using await async, well, using async, async and await. Um, and uh, that builds, so build succeeded. So with that done, let's kick into an Android project. So let's quickly go to Android and do a demo.android. And we don't call it .android, we call it .droid, otherwise we get naming confusion. So we call it demo.droid, and we'll add a reference to our core. Let's see, we can do that. There's no complaints or anything. Um, we will manage NuGet packages, and we will pull in MVVM cross. And it comes. And then with that done, we should, as long as we remove the kind of default activity one that's there, and we should be able to run this up. And let's just see what happens when we run it up. So if we hit debug start new, I may need to actually set it as a start project for it to run. Let's just see. So it's building and yeah, okay. So it just, there's something new in this version. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but you have to set this as the startup project. And then once you've done that, you can do a debug start new. And hopefully with that out of the way, we go to our emulator. Still building. So it's now installing the application, synchronizing assembly, so it's almost ready to go. Um, it'll fire up the emulator and hopefully now we should see um, our view and view model come on the screen any moment and there is our length so it was too quick the hit to actually find it but the link coming back from bing.com is 41524 and that is it you know that's our uh, our project up and running um, just to, to make that slightly better let's just add a button and let's do a public i command go get return new mvx command and so in here we'll just do the go async when the command fires. And we won't anymore put it into the constructor because that was not that good a demo. And then in the UI, let's just quickly add in a button. So it's our first view. It's gonna open up, oh, it's open up very small, but hopefully it'll be okay. And what we'll do is just to the bottom here, we'll add a button. And we will bind the click of the button to go. And we'll just put some text on it. Text. Just tick me. Um, so let's just run that one up. Debug start new. And now hopefully we should at least be able to see that it, you know, it goes off and does the, the hit when we request it rather than in the constructor. As long as I removed it from the constructor, I did. So let's see. Hopefully we'll go up to the build state again.
loads up. Sorry about the emulator speed, it's just the emulator. And you can see we've got our normal binding going on here. Um, but if we choose to hit this click me, then hopefully it goes off, does the hit, comes back, pulls it. So that's await async in our portable class library, async and await, and that's our uh, Droid UI. So let's, uh, oh, that's my um, video card running out of memory. So um, let's hopefully go over and do the same for touch. And hopefully it won't have destroyed me, that uh, little uh, video card glitch. So um, if I then go over to iOS and I'm going to create a new Hello World iPhone application, and this is going to be called demo.touch. Hit OK. Um, you get these kind of little glitches as you're loading, which is a bit annoying, but hopefully they'll work through those. And you can see there's a few errors being reported about my connection. Um, but hopefully those will all go away. And let's do a manage NuGet. And again, we're going to pull in MVVM cross. And there is another step you have to do here, but I'm going to not do the step and show you what happens if you um, have a, an error. Um, but uh, you'll you'll see what I what I mean when it comes to it. So and then um, do you know my normal steps of replacing app delegate CS app delegate CS with the contents of the TFT file. I then add a reference to my core. I then just go into the uh, first view. And obviously I'm going to need to add a button here, so let's do that. Bar button equals new UI button. Um, and I won't give it a button type this time, um, but I will give it a, a rectangle, F. Um, and this button is going to be 10, 90, 300, 40 in size. Button dot set title, let's give it some text, and this is going to be click me again we'll set that for pretty much all the states so set it for normal and we will do button dot set title color and we'll make that black so that it shows up or let's make it purple or something just so for distinction and again we will specify the state um, and then we'll add that button to the screen button and then what we'll need to do is just bind that button to the command so we're down in our bindings what we'll do is set dot bind and this is going to be the button to the go command right so that should build as it is let's just check that or maybe it won't and this is where we'll, I'll show you the additional step that is needed so let's just build that and see what happens and you can see, okay, so there's a couple of things. First of all, there's no default property name by anymore, application name anymore. So what you have to do is you go into the iOS application and you'll have to give it an identifier. So I'll go to this com.mbbmcross.demo and the application name is demo. Uh, version is one, so that should be okay. And then what I'd like to do is uh, see if I can build it again. So let's build. And you'll see now that we get some uh, problems reported about the fact that I command isn't referenced. So we have to do something about it. So let's just set this as the startup project. And then what we're going to do is add a reference. And you go to assemblies and hopefully in this list you'll see that system.windows is there. So you need to click system.windows. And then we'll try building again, but I still think we might see a problem here, so let's just keep going through. So build. Okay, so it's not giving us a problem now, but it will at runtime, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep going through this train. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to try debugging it. So let's just set iPhone Simulator as our... Um, as our target and we're going to deploy onto a retina iPhone so let's just give it a go start new and what we should see is it'll go over and it will run on the remote device so let me set up my um, VNC viewer and unfortunately before this even sets up we're probably going to see that this is going to crash you'll see it down here somewhere it crashes and there's an unhandled exception it doesn't really tell you anything about the exception if you hit break, 
and then you go to the, the um, immediate window, you can do dollar exception. And that comes back and it tells you that what's going on is that you can't find Microsoft.threading.tasks. And that's because it's not there, because it starts with Microsoft. So what you have to do is uh, shift F5 out of that, come back to the demo project for touch. And what we're going to do is we're going to add those task assemblies for the BCL. And because of the new licensing for, for Microsoft, these are now available. So they are here. Um, and let's just add them. It might not be this particular project you need, but it may just be the BCL one, but this works. And so we'll pull that in. And what you'll then see is that in the references, we've got these new ones added. Unfortunately, it's also added a couple of others. So if you now build this, you'll get a different error. Let's just build it. And you can see we've got two system runtimes and system threadings and things going on now. So let's just delete those two guys. Now, if you build this, Hopefully it builds this time. So that's built, I believe. And not only is it built, but if you actually now go and debug start new, it should work all the way through as a demo. So let's just uh, see if that does. And where is my type VNC? Okay, so it's here. So I'm gonna connect the remote machine this time. And it's already starting up, unfortunately, so uh, you've missed the first bit, but we're almost there. So here's my remote view. Zoom in a bit. And put in my secret password. And here is my iPhone. Hopefully you can see that okay. And if I zoom in again, you can see it's there. It's got these data bound entries, so if we did start typing, you can see the data bind is working. And if you hit click me, then it goes off and it fetches the home page of uh, Bing and it comes back with 41524. So just to recap what we've done, we quickly set up a uh, core library and that core library had a um, profile of 158 which meant it was Silverlight 5 and Windows Phone 8, slightly different to before. And we've imported a few NuGet packages into it, MVVM Cross and some Microsoft.bcl and Microsoft.net.htp ones in. That meant we could then use async and await. We did that. We then added a Droid project, and the Droid project within Windows, at least within Visual Studio, just worked and allowed us to, you know, connect to those async and await and to use them. And then we added a touch project, and the touch project needed a few more little tweaks to get it to work, but it did, you know, basically just work. So I know some of you are experiencing some pain. I know some of it's to do with activation and, and Xamarin's activation services, whatever they are. Um, but I know also that the, you know some of you out there are really you know having some problems with profile numbers and things. If you switch from profile 104 to 158, then that will cause you to lose um, uh, your settings for your Windows Phone 7 support. Um, you can stay in profile 104. You just can't then easily build on a Mac. Um, so you know there's winners and losers here unfortunately um, but looking forwards hopefully we'll sort out some of those problems and work out where we should be um, it does look like Windows Phone 7 might get tombstoned a little um, but overall you know you can get on you can build and because you're using it async and await you should be up and running you know really quite quickly um, and you know building awesome apps and awesome code uh, so that's the end of the this quick demo um, I hope it made some sense as I said we're using the latest stables Amra and stuff we're using the latest stable NuGet, and we're using just slightly off-stable MVVM cross stuff, um, but that will hopefully get promoted to stable very soon. Um, I hope that all made sense. As I say, I'm Slodge. Please, you know, if you've got questions, Stack Overflow, or you know, ask each other on the Stammer and forums, um, share the knowledge, and we will get this making even more awesome. Um, excellent. Um, as I say, brilliant news yesterday. Um, I hope you all go off and build excellent apps.